knowledge, information sharing, and the digital mining economy. <clears throat> Module 3. The objectives are to share ideas and experiences and deal with emerging issues. The outline of the this module will be discussing briefly the background um, for IR and the digital mining economy, policy implications, COVID-19 and mining. Most of these are new issues. The mining industry is dynamic. In fact, meaning that there are too many moving parts. Some issues require common approaches, while others require sharing ideas and many other modes. And these can be discussed at the mutual level, mutual bilateral level between countries, can be discussed at REC and continental levels in our particular case. Um, there are a number of issues that come to mind, uh, environmental challenges, technological challenges, um, uh, market challenges, um, COVID-19 and so on. On the other hand, uh, such forums can also be used for benchmarking issues in other words, how can, how does Africa relate to the global village of mining? How is it performing? What is it that it can do in order that we remain competitive as a destination of investment? Or rather, um, um, participating in the, in the global market. Um, the forum can also be used as annual reviews of the status of the industry in Africa with particular reference to the objective of the, the Africa Mining Vision. The, the forums can also be used for discussing opportunities and strategies for the future as a continent. In Africa, we're lucky there are relevant structures which are already in place. Um, the in in um, like the SADC, ECOWAS, and and um, EAC. You know, um, a number have harmonisation ideas. Um, it would be appropriate to consider approach towards best practice and working together with forums, discussing experiences and developments in identified areas. This module will unpack just two issues, um, which is the fourth industrial revolution in the sector and the digital mining economy and the effective effect of COVID-19 and the future prospects for the industry. These are real issues and need serious ref reflection as they affect the continent's mining sector and hence the potential benefits that the continent can get. Industrial revolution is is classified uh, through four stages that the first one was really uh, overruled by uh, water and steam power which replaced the human power uh, the second was when um, electricity was used now for mass production and the third were electronics and information technology was used to automate 
production. Now we are in the fourth industrial revolution where there is convergence across the physical, digital, and the biological domains. And the mining sector has not been spared. So the fourth industrial revolution is the way it has affected the mining sector is that is that the digital transformation has now become priority uh, in mining companies. It is um, um, a strategy and research agenda for mining companies because they want to remain profitable and competitive. So it is very important to understand the new technical revolution because it has serious implications in the African uh, mineral sector. Um, it's important then to review elements of digital application and the implications that it has in the mineral sector. The um, 4IR, as the Fourth Industrial Revolution is, is um, nom commonly known, is in the form of computing power, digital devices, sensors, uh, connecti connectivity, analytics, cloud computing, uh, Internet of Things, techni technological ecosystems, um, user interfaces, and so on. <clears throat> it has changed how humans live and work. Um, it uh, has dis disrupted lives of companies, individuals, and communities. Minds in Africa will need to acknowledge looming and real changes and their impact on societies. The Digital mining economy is a type of economy that uses automated devices, machines, and streamlines processes to generate real data with different components of the mining value chain to optimize decision making in the extractive processes and to generate greater utility safety and efficiency in the mining of all borders. That was a quote for, from Libra. Benefits of the digital mining economy. From the economic perspective, um, benefits of digitization has raised the value to 300 billion in value for the mining and metal sector. It has made, the, uh, uh, in terms of profit, you are talking about 9% increase in industry profit. Uh, where environment is concerned, in terms of real terms and value, you are talking about 610 million tons reduction of carbon dioxide emissions from the normal, as opposed to normal processes. Um, Three billion dollars of value in reduced emissions to society. Um, in social terms, we are talking in terms of a thousand lives which are saved, 44,000 injuries which are av avoided and 10% decrease in fat, fat, fatalities and 20% decrease in, in injuries. So you see the um, direct benefits. But we, we should unpack some of these in detail in relation to mining at a later time. Mining countries and digitization trends, for instance, this was uh, in 2018, 
Um, um, there are a few here that showed. Unfortunately, we haven't shown Mali here in Africa, unfortunately. Anyway, um, Rio Tinto mine, or mine of the future um, in Australia. That's a um, well-developed one. Um, there is Chile, Canada, um, the US, um, India, uh, and China. So these are uh, countries with high digitization trends. What is the rationale for a region for a digital mining economy? Um, now, mining companies um, are consistently investing efforts to address these challenges in order to remain profitable and competitive. Um, that is because of declining grades, commodity fluctuations, particularly downturns, labor conditions, regulatory conditions, upward cost pressures, safety considerations, access to, and then of course, what is important is access to accurate, complete, timely data for meaningful decision making. So these issues are key challenges that the mining companies are facing and hence their thrust towards uh, digital um, um, agenda um, or research in order to deal with the, um, these issues. So the future of a digital mine with the uh, uh, fourth industrial revolution will have among other things automated physical operations and digitized assets automated equipment which will aim to improve productivity to reduce costs to improve safety because there are fewer people and so on. Drones will be used for data collection, inspection of workplaces, will be used for stock control and safety monitoring. 3D printing will reduce lead times and inventory holding costs for critical parts, which then they can make um, um, at home or in-house. Wearab wearable uh, technologies for, for increased operator safety and support real-time machine instructions. The Internet of Things for sensor network providing low-cost real-time data across operations. Digital Twin to provide accurate digital model of the physical environment including geological engineering and the asset information to simulate business and operational um, decisions virtually so we can see quite a number of advantages of for ir this is all aggre aggregated at a digital mine nerve center in other words you all these are centralized where and you operate from a remote center which brings together real data across mining value chain to improve planning control and decision making to optimize output cost and capital expenditure and improve safety and what else would a mining company want? Now, it, what it does is that it improves visualization. You can see everything in one piece. And, you know, um, 
it improves reporting and real-time monitoring and so on. Digitization extends to other supporting processes and systems which include supply chain management, human resources and finance. So no aspect of the mining value chain is not impacted. The potential use of the digital technology, as I had mentioned earlier on, um, in my, to manage mines um, effectively, more effectively, is identified as evidence-based insights have a 20 to 10 to 20 percent improvement potential. In other words, 10 to 20 percent improvement potential. Um, integrating information can be improved 20 to 30 percent and redesigning integrated system integration of and optimization of all technologies across can actually improve by 50 percent so the big opportunities for the mine of the future so fourth industrial revolution provides enormous opportunities for the mining company. But at the same time, this creates challenges, which include the following among others. Right, so these challenges include the new skill requirements. We talked about skills training in the previous one, in the previous module. The changing workforce, because the needs now are new organizational in restructuring and adoption of new technologies. So these are new um, challenges that uh, need to be surmounted and, and more for the, the countries themselves. One, for countries themselves, there is potential and real loss of low-skilled labor in the sector. Um, those that are at the most risk are the routine and repetitive ones, because that's the um, fundamental basis of of of, of mechanization, for of uh, automation. If it is routine and repetitive, you can automate. So these are the earliest ones that will go and they go. At the national level, at the macro level, then you have, um, if you have a, a bigger mining industry, then you have uh, the low skilled, low pay and the high skill, high pay segment, which of course may lead to greater social tension you know, that are already common in mining communities because these high skill will have to be paid very well and that the much lower end will have to be paid much lower because they're not, their demand is not as high. So there is going to be social, greater uh, social tension in mining communities and an increasing wealth gap may fuel tension further within these uh, communities. So digital mines have resulted in big shifts away from traditional mining technology, as we've seen there, and the nature of resources needed to manage that infrastructure. So if it has moved away from traditional mining technology, which means that the inputs to manage that were used to manage the old mining technology become irrelevant. And, and, and the, the new ones require new inputs. This, of course, in itself has serious implications on local content policies. For example, if you were already aiming to make nuts and bolts for certain equipment and you were 
already making certain services and, and, and goods, you may have to re, re, reorient now to new skills, training, and, and etc. in order to participate. Otherwise, there is a serious problem. Now, the skills development, the new skills development will be a blend of technology enhancements, right? Because those are now the key, and traditional learning. So there must be a, 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 a blend, new way of teaching that the universities will have to uh, reorient themselves in order to uh, keep up with the new requirements of, um, of mining. New skills will not only, will not only have heavy emphasis on science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, what we call STEM skills, but to also, uh, but those that, you know, deal with the, you know, huge data, large, large data and algorithms, and encouraging, of course, critical thinking, creativity, emotional intelligence, and, 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 and so on. Um, so, you know, reskilling of employees becomes a key component as technology is employed, as, you know, as technology is uh, evolving, reskilling must also be continuously taking place. This goes for considerations in communities as well as for appropriate local cluster development. In other words, how do you slowly uh, bring in the participation of communities? What sort of things will they, will you be able to link them to uh, the mine? They cannot, the mine cannot remain as an enclave. So there is new thinking that must come into play in um, this new uh, fourth industrial revolution. Otherwise, the biggest beneficiaries of innovation are those that provide intellectual and physical capital, innovators, shareholders, and investors with others. And clearly, this is not where communities are and therefore they are left behind. So this is a big assignment. This is a big um, area that needs um, um, uh, engagement in order to be more creative. The key issue will be to interrogate how digital technologies could provide the means to address social and economic inefficiencies in communities because these inefficiencies are already there, stimulate local growth in ecosystems where mines operate and build self-sustaining communities to weather the bad times. And this requires collective approach by mining companies, government, and communities to inform digital strategies. What are policy responses, therefore? Governments have to, one, re-strategize with a gap analysis and scenario planning because this is an area of um, lack of control and um, um, uncert high uncertainty. You need scenario planning of the needed skills for the future based on their long-term development objectives. Very important. Policies must be redesigned to increase um, STIs and STEM education. Reskilling mine workers for other industries should be a requirement in all mining rights negotiations. Mining policies that make Internet of Things available and accessible is the key success in 4IR and the digital mining economy. How you relate these to community engagement and participation becomes key. 
government should finally institute national digital economy policy that emphasizes digitization efforts in all industries, particularly in mining, because it's, it's not only mining that is that is uh, that is going digital. It's all industries, but particularly in mining, and because mining is in 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 the rural areas and regionally. AU's digital transformation strategy and other sub-regional strategy economy, uh, regional digital strategies should be harmonized. This is um, uh, important. Now, implications, it's important to use a shared value framework which uses key concept that competitiveness of a business and health of the community in which it operates are interwoven. It's, it's, it's a non-negotiable and, and, and an extremely great concept. Now, um, these are these these shows levels of shared value creation for extractive companies. Now, in in level one, for instance, because there is nothing that a company will get any contribution from society, from the community. Uh, Therefore, it is important that companies make initiatives to make contribution to the community uh, in terms of any product that they can supply for engagement from the community. Level two, of course, is, is redefining productivity in value chains. In other words, improving the workforce and also communities to strengthen suppliers in the value chain, increase local um, disaster and emergency preparedness and, and rehabilitation capabilities, improvement utilization of water, energy, and other sources used in the operation. Um, so now slowly what you're doing is trying to create engagement where the, the workforce and communities are able to con slowly make contribution to the, ex to the company. Creating an enabling local environment, develop the local cluster supporting the extractive sectors, invest in shared infrastructure and logistics ne networks, partner with other local clusters and government, including community infrastructure, play an active role in broad-based economic and community development, improve local and national governance capacity. Now, we are, these are, these are, that's the normal thinking we wish, the normal thinking in terms of uh, fourth industrial revolution. In other words, where does the internet and the internet of things, etc., um, that the company uh, engages with to allow communities engage with companies in order to get a shared value. Now, the next one is um, COVID-19. We I try to um, cluster these in uh, three levels, um, at the global level, at the country level, and the, um, uh, at the sector level. From when it started, before COVID-19 struck, struck rather, the global economy was interconnected. At country level, there was a private sector domination. And the sector, there were a fair amount of 
um, global value chains. When COVID just struck at the global level, first thing that that happened was closed uh, interconnectedness. Transport were closed down. Trade were closed down. Value chains were closed down. And each country was left to its own fate. At the country level, government role dominated because it was isolated and it isolates itself uh, and emphasizing first priority disaster relief strategies and obviously uh, the economy stagnated and the service work only that took precedence. At the sector level, most of most of the sector shut down or completely slowed and the supported initiatives support initiatives to communities and also support initiatives to the state when covid sort of eased down then there was a phase, what you might call phase one, at the continental level, reopening borders. With bare necessities to begin with. Uh, earlier on, the EU considered uh, necessity for tourism. Um, and what was important was cooperation and alliance with so so you had only alliance partners at the country level there was a reopening of economies but with government oversight and priorities they called the shots at the sector level their priorities was safety of personnel, customers, and business partners. Avoiding and also avoiding transmission between one worker to the and the other. And most importantly, again, avoiding recurrence because that would be difficult to attend. So these were the key areas uh, for the, um, at the uh, sector level. Then what I would call, what others would call phase two, recovery. Now, now you'd have to regain the conf uh, consumer confidence. Whether, will it be the same? We don't know. Savings and expenditure pattern will they be the same or or they're now changing don't know at the country level reopening um reprogramming uh comp most of the countries now were looking at indigenous knowledge-based culture with traditional systems and values now saying what is it that we can do ourselves in our country um, focusing on services and SMEs because this is where now um, most employment is. Um, most countries then initiated proactive economic policy to try and revive economies and reset priorities. Um, um, science and technology, R&D, um refocused aiming at self-sufficiency growth in usable innovation innovation that they can use at home um and uh, emphasis on environmental system uh, innovation in, in terms of climate change at the sector level which 
goes to the net which is reprogramming towards the next the next normal will be is revisiting exploration strategies which are the minerals that the future mining is going to be the future demand for minerals is going to be um companies also looking at now having been um having been um, um shocked by covid 19 the emphasis on social participation in the economy um linkage development in the local economy mechanization and automation you know to to rely less and less on people on on human bodies broadening markets and products because of the experiences of the past where um, most markets were closed down remote working uh, which of course applies to all uh, um, uh, industries reduce costs and improve productivity now, through automation and lean transformation and so on but at the same time of course um, power uh, and the other infrastructure appreciated that it may be a threat now again phase three reforming um, at the global level, the emphasis seems to be minimizing supply risks, not just relying on one, by, but diversifying. Developing local supply chains, uh, creating as much as possible locally, rather than relying on imports. Early warning system, so that uh, um, industries are not, um, so that globally uh, uh, countries uh, companies are not um, overtaken by events and emphasis on climate change was the the covid 19 showed how beautiful a climate could be without the way we've been operating before covid 19. at the country level Countries are looking at regional and continental focus because these are nearer. These are the same. You can negotiate, you can contact, you cannot have a, a, a breakdown in, in inputs, in transport and all those. Implementation of regional and continental social contracts with direct plans for incremental development provides all these opportunities, regional and continental socio-economic policies, regional stability and strengthening regional identity, regional s and investment, climate um, sharing facilities, innovative application of regional indigenous knowledge. In other words, countries are going towards regional approach and Africa provides a brilliant uh, um, um, opportunity for, like in our particular case, um, the Continental Free Trade Agreement and, and various other uh, infrastructural issues and regional value chains. At the, <clears throat> at the reform at the company level, at the sector level, um, looking at the critical stages in the regional and global value chains the better particularly with regional uh, 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 regional mining um, uh, value chains broadening markets and product mitigating risks so the more markets and inputs uh, for 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 the the outputs and also inputs that are required for the mining would not be affected so much 
mitigating risks, accelerating digital transformation, as we talked earlier, um, focus competitiveness through consolidation and innovation, i.e. going downstream, deliver innovation, uh, explore new industries and products, isolated energy units for rural, rural Africa, new ways of getting customers, investigate manufacturing for self-reliance on uh, industries and uh, inputs. So there are quite a number of things that talk to self-reliance, mechanization and automation, um, innovation, and, and, and so on. It's a new ways of doing things. And this has, these have serious implications on skills training and the new ways of doing things. Finally, of course, is the issue of climate change, um, where there is a public demand globally for cleaner energy. Um, what are the actions now by governments in relation to the mineral sector, the things that they can do? Uh, both government, civil society, industry um, towards clean energy. Develop strategy, strategies aligning political, I mean, sorry, aligning potential growing market for core com commodities with sustainable future. What are you talking about? Um, Africa is talking so much about cobalt and, and, and others. Um, what strategies do you need? Um, mapping minerals and generating data for potential investors. In other words, what are these key minerals that are now needed for the future? Um, understanding supply constraints and demand, demand patterns for all these. Um, developing networks and raising awareness. Facilitating linkages among research and social communities and recycling rate improves availability of these minerals. And that must be taken into consideration um, seriously because um, out there the, the, um, the, um, the technologies for, for reworking what's being produced uh, there. So these are key issues in terms of um, COVID-19 um, that need sharing and coming up with the common agenda, with uh, common approaches, common agendas where necessary for the benefit of the um,